Hey guys, welcome back to Young Americans Abroad, your best place for weekly content on young American soccer players playing overseas. My name is Austin Van Churn. And my name is Patrick Ferry. And welcome to our show. Well, guys, we have a big show for you this week. We had a really nice performance over the weekend from Jonathan Amon, scored a goal. That's right, and then even in a, a Sweden there as well, Romain Gall has a great performance. That's right, two goals, two, two goals. goals. We also have uh, the second goal of the season for Bobby Wood we want to discuss. That's so right. We got a big show, like I said before, so get ready. Well, so the first player we want to talk about is none other than Jonathan Amon. So Jonathan Amon played against Bronby this past weekend. Played about 71 minutes, I believe, right, yeah, Pat? Yeah, yeah, played like that. crucial uh, a cameo there. He yeah. got the opening goal, Austin. He did. Uh, he unfortunately, did. Uh, right before he was subbed off in about the 67th minute, he uh, gave away a penalty there uh, as they're already 2-1 mm -hmm. down, but they ended up to the 3-1 loss there. But Amon, uh, you know, from what we've heard, had a, had a pretty good game. Yeah, and, uh, you know, they lost to Brown B 3-1, which I believe, Pat, you just said. Yeah, league um, leaders there. They're tough. True, league leaders. Um, but Amon's goal was really nice. Uh, came off of some hard work for him, uh, getting at the, the center backs, uh, poking the ball away. And then a teammate passed to him in open space, and he held off a defender, defender, and finished mm -hmm. um, yeah. in transition. So and, you know, I watched that highlight a few times actually, and it was mm -hmm. just just a highlight. But um, what I noticed was uh, one of the other uh, players on the team made a, a pretty good run. Yeah. But but at the same time, it looked like it appeared the other player was open, and Moan could have passed it for an easier option. Yeah. But he was actually closed down very quickly, and that pass could have been deflected or it. I, you know, I thought that was a pretty smart, intelligent, maybe it did come off of a little selfish, but I think that was the right move. Yeah. Um, if you do watch that, it does look like the guy's wide open, kind of running um, right down the middle that he could have passed it to. But yeah. um, at the same time, I thought that was a very mature um, True. You know, final third uh, decision. Decision, <laughs> exactly. Yeah, and it was, it was a nice goal. Like, yeah. It takes some... some toughness to hold off the defender who was literally right on his back yeah. and to score right around the goalkeeper at a not a tough angle i guess but just a weird angle yeah, it's always tough strange. when you're basically shooting directly at the goalkeeper but, trying to curve it around him mm -hmm. and um, awesome what do you what so. do you think i guess uh just with these these friendlies coming up and you know who knows yeah. at this point uh, well we know what knows? two players yeah, we do know. <laughs> so far right so christian yeah. pulisic it was announced will be on uh that roster that will play bolivia we're still not sure if he'll be in the U.S. roster that goes to France and Ireland. I would bet that he will be on that roster, but again, no confirmation least, on yeah, that. Yeah, at least Bolivia there, yeah. Mm -hmm. But we also heard that Josh Sargent this week from, right. from, from Dave Sarakin will, uh, will be on the roster that's, that's at least huge, for, for one of those awesome. games or, you know, all three hopefully. Um, so that's, that's exciting. And yeah, I think, Pat, you're leading into the question right, of on, yeah. whether or not so all of our fans want to know. <laughs> yeah, and I think... Uh, I don't know. I, I think it's a little early still, but he's shown that, you know, he can he can score goals. He, he's quick. He's He's got some strength to him and also a little bit of dribbling ability. So, and, and he also looks very, very driven, very motivated. So I think all those things together make it kind of a perfect scenario for, for where we're at right now with our national team to why not call him in um, and, yeah. and just see what he's, what he's able to do. I mean, obviously... Playing against France will be a tough challenge, and maybe he's not the best player to, to play in that game. Um, but if he's driven enough and hungry enough in camp, there's no telling, you know, and if we call him in, what he can do and, yeah. and what he'll show us in a game like that. Um, so I think it might be a little too early to call him in, but at this point <laughs> where we're at with the, the U.S. men's national team, kind of why not call him in? We're in that we're in, we're that, in that, that phase right, right now. now that yeah, phase. Yeah. Yeah. I definitely agree with you there. It would be um, it'd be nice to see him in a, a U.S. jersey. Although it would be nice to see him with the U-20s, too, in the future. That's true. But I don't think we're going to wait two years if he keeps progressing this fast. Do uh, you think even uh, to see him a potential at the Olympic Ross or Cup. anything? Or, uh, is that yeah. Kind of... I mean, that's, that's two and a half years away or so. Yeah. So it's really tough to tell who will be a part of that team. I know Brian Shredder just put out another article on the potential uh, 2020 World Cup team or Olympic team. Yeah. And who he thinks could be on that team, best case scenario, and then 
also more realistic scenario. He had a, a lot of good in-depth analysis. Um, so always a good good read, Brian. Sure to check it source, out yeah. if you haven't seen it already. But yeah, I mean, Jonathan Amon would be nice. It would be nice to see him in the the full national team in the in the near future, at the the beginning of June. Wishful uh, thinking of May. right now, I guess. <laughs> yeah, a little bit wishful thinking. Bit. And you know, this is only his second game back from injury. So, um, but it's good to see that he's performing well since he's been back on the pitch. Definitely. Uh, looks like he had a, a great game ahead. this weekend. In addition to his goal, so yeah, we'll we'll keep monitoring him and and seeing where where the season takes him and, and hopefully, you know, he goes far and, and plays well to end this season and then next year uh, becomes maybe a regular starter for, for North yeah. and, and and turns up for, uh, yeah. for, for North <laughs> all season. So now, Pat, we want to move over to the Belgian League. That's right. And who do we want to talk about in the Belgian League this That's right. week? So it is Kenny Seth. That's right. Uh, you know, Seth, not Saif. Right. Yeah. <laughs> but anyway, he uh, he was involved. A crucial ninety minutes again for Anderlecht's uh, win over Charleroi. Uh, it's really crucial. It kind of puts them uh, right and it solidifies them in that second place spot during the kind of complicated, confuse, confusing yeah. uh, Belgian, uh, I guess, playoff format, as you'd say. Yes. Uh, yeah. So yeah, that as as a, as it is now second place is the qualifying for the champions league so they would be in that you know with other champions league teams qualifying in that group stage um the first place obviously directly into the champions league is held by bruges and ethan mm. horvath which uh haven't talked about much but uh <laughs> yeah. don't want to go into that it's a shame anyway yeah well since saif or sef has been uh <laughs> sef's been very strong this whole season uh you know, a lot, you know, yeah. few goals, uh, a lot of assists, dangerous crosses, uh, really good chemistry throughout the, the games that I've seen this whole year. That he's developed with his underlock teammates, and yeah. I don't see any reason why it, it looks. I don't want to say definite, but most likely that he'll be and uh, underlock will buy him out from that loan uh, from Ghent there. Which would be nice. Um, which would be yeah, yeah. great, and that, that's a great team. Uh, you know, Sasha Kleshen was on that uh, on right. team before. Yeah. Um, but anyway, I think what we saw even with that friendly and his uh, brief appearances with the national team seems like he's yeah. doing well in camp, and um, he seems like he'd be a great player going forward. I, I think he'd fit in with that midfield uh, yeah. pretty well. Yeah, he kind of reminds me a little bit of, of Darlington Nagby, his game. Um, he's kind of smooth on the ball and, and is able to link play from, from the midfield to the attack and, and going forward. Um, so, yeah, I think he's going to be a, a big player for us in this next cycle. I think he's going to be one of our most mature players um, with, yeah. in, within that team. Yeah, when you think so about it. It's a, a big role to play for him. Definitely. And um, Anderlecht's a good place for him to be at right now. Um, I think so. If you obviously Bruges is the better team yeah. in Belgium right now, but Anderlecht's been by far the the best team over the past you know ten years or so. I would yeah, say. Yeah, for sure. So what I've seen. Great so. place to be. You know, whether it's Europa League or Champions League, hope most yeah. hopefully. Let's hope. Um, yeah. yeah, it's a good great starting point. Get a few Americans in the Champions League. Uh, yeah, we could, have, uh, we could have a few. What, four off the top of my mind? If you have uh, Christian Pulisic, Wes McKinney, McKinney Kenny, uh, Kenny Seth, Ooh. Seth. Ooh. and um, Keaton Parks. Uh, yeah, it's, I, uh, think, I think that would be all, though, but. Yeah, it's looking. I think we might yeah, be missing it's one close. Or two. Benfica's mm. in that. They're in that tough race right now. They just True. lost, but uh, mm. uh, it's still close. They're, they're right there, so. Okay. It's a big season for uh, Parks as well, but um, yeah, no, uh, for sure. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, Austin, uh, we got we're going uh, to the Bundesliga there. Yes, um, we had a great tour. <laughs> yeah, finally, <laughs> finally, and Jeez. that's no other than Bobby Wood. So Bobby Wood finally got back on the score sheet this weekend for it's for Hamburg. Have a watch. You got watch. Yeah, it's, it's about time. It's about yeah. time. <laughs> um, but yeah, he scored his second goal of the season, uh, first since August in uh, a penalty in Hamburg's 3-1 win over at Werder Bremen this weekend. So we also played about 73 minutes, I believe. Um, came out in, in like the mid-70 minute uh, of the game. Looked okay all game. I mean... Pretty active? He, so. yeah, yeah, he was active. He worked hard. Um, got a little bit tired, I think, during the second half, and, and they rightly pulled him out of the game just because it seemed like he gave all he, all he had. Yeah. He was starting to Sure, they wanted to hold on to the win. <laughs> yeah, that, that too. They really needed the, uh, these points, and it was a really big win for Hamburg, who are still alive and, and not relegated yet and actually have a, a decent chance of staying up. Um, 
I would say right now it's more like 50-50 that they stay up, where before this weekend it looked like 70-30, like 60-40 oh, yeah. that they were going to go down. So this was definitely a huge win. Bobby Wood getting that first goal of the game is also huge for them uh, as well. He celebrated in, in, a, in a grand fashion going up to the fans and, and throwing up his arms and stuff. So oh, nice. he was That's very, very happy to score, obviously, which, which we <laughs> he should be since yeah, he yes. hasn't done it much all year. But the fans were, were super excited too, which is my key takeaway from, from that goal. Um, and, you know, it was, a, it was an okay penalty. It looked very similar to the penalty he took against Paraguay with the, the U.S. men's national team. He had a little bit of a stutter step before the, uh, he actually hit the ball which I'm not a big fan of taking that stutter step. I think it just complicates yeah. things and, and makes it harder yeah, to... It depends, yeah. Or, like, I, less clear of a, a path in I, your I mind. agree with you. I know some players like some Neymar and some other players like to do yeah. trickery like that, but I agree with you. Just, you know, don't want anything else in my head. Just no, pick the spot, go right, right up to it. Don't yeah. Don't think about, oh, I have to take two or three stutter steps. But right. that's just... I agree with you there. <laughs> I mean, I guess if it works, it works. But it works, it works. I don't know. We'll see. Yeah. But so hopefully yeah. this is the first of uh, a few goals first here before the end of the season. But um, like like we touched on, Bobby Wood looked looked okay. It was his first time starting in the past. I think it was three games. He wasn't even in the eighteen. Right. Has the Art, past three Art, games. Uh, the youngster been ahead of him, or has it been? No, uh, it's it's been more like a combination of there. like Aaron Hunt. Uh, Lewis Holt be a little bit. Um, oh, that's interesting. I think they've been playing Hunt more as the the nine. I don't know. They they are on their third coach this year, so he's been really experimenting with things and so just it's a trying to get in there for the best set of players. <laughs> yeah, it's it's been brutal for Hamburg, but a, a big win for them. Another uh, well, good boost of confidence for Bobby Wood this week, and and we're happy to finally see him back on the score sheet for uh, for Hamburg. So now uh, we want to move over to another player, Pat, that had yeah, a very good weekend. Great game. And someone that might be playing his way into a, a U.S. men's national team appearance in the, in the upcoming future. And that would be Romain Gall in Sweden. So, Pat, yeah, what did he do this weekend? That's awesome. So for uh, Gif Sundsvall there, he, uh, mm. he scored uh, both goals in an important 2-1 win over Elks, Elfsberg, I believe it is. Um, so, yeah, the first one was a penalty. Uh, stepped right up, confidently took it. Okay. And uh, the second goal, uh, it, it, was, it was beautiful. Actually, the, the player, I, I, I don't know his name, is a midfielder <laughs> that turned really quickly. It was like a you don't know a Gif Sundsvall player? I'm sorry, I'm sorry. <laughs> but the mid, amazing turn, quick okay. right from a throw-in, turned, crossed the diagonal ball all the way across in the corner. Oh, wow. Perfectly on the, like, on the money to remain goal, like, I don't even know how he saw it. He, he wasn't even, like, looking and played perfect diagonal. Like, unbelievable. Anyway, I mean, Gall confidently <laughs> took it. Okay. Nice touch uh, right towards goal. Um, it, was, it was a tough angle, and he beat the goalie near post there, which is interesting. Okay. Um, you know, on the side there on the good. left. But, uh, you know, confidently put it in. And that's, uh, you know, less like last week we talked. He scored before, so he has three goals in the last two games in the Alzvenska. Yeah. Um, yeah, so that's that's great, that's and he's fantasy. actually uh, you know <laughs> scored uh, in the the cup games earlier in the season as well. Um, so I think he had like one or two goals there and uh, a few assists as well. So it looks like he's uh, starting really strong, and like Austin mentioned, uh, playing his way back into yeah. the, uh, the U.S. at 23, still young. Still young, yeah, and and he looks like he's he's really matured his game over the past like two years or so, just from yeah. what we saw when he was with that U20 team for a period of time. Um, and I I believe it was 2015 it was the last time I really got to see a lot of Romain Gall's game right, before kind of this season and the radar. a little bit last year. He was in that I believe uh, like we mentioned before, but kind of troubled with the Columbus Crew, ended up with the Aztecs for a bit, yeah. I believe, and then went to a third division. Yeah, so he actually right. went over to a third division team in Sweden um, and has just worked his way up to his opportunity with Gif Sundsvall, which that's, is That's great impressive. to see, Austin. Yeah, and um, it's, it's good to, to see another player uh, in another different league uh, going abroad and, and finding success out of, you know, making his own opportunity for himself, uh, starting at right. a low level and, and working his way up, proving that he can become... Uh, a player that's you know worthy of playing in a in a top league or you know the top flight of yeah. of that country. Definitely, so that's exciting stuff. Yeah. And, uh, also noted, they're they're in six right now. I guess soon as well, okay. and they haven't lost. They're one of only oh, wow. two team, the, another team that haven't lost uh, in the competition yet. 
the oh, league. Cool. So um, let's hope for the you know best for Romain Gall and uh, see where it goes from there. But, yeah. Uh, another player Allison are talking about uh, who's had a very successful stint. Again, in let's say second, so. Yeah, yeah. Say pretty, pretty he's, endured, he's endured a few brutal yeah, losses. Yeah, a few this, brutal losses this year. But uh, overall, is uh, I think he's I think it was like twenty or twenty nine starts. Um, yeah, yeah. And he's played over fifty, um, you know, games in the last two loans, and that's no other than Matt Miazga, which I should yeah. have mentioned there earlier. But <laughs> um, yeah, so he's been pretty. You know, it's, it's pretty uh, difficult to find. You know, you go out. Uh, on loan for the first time, maybe go back to the team again. Yeah. Uh, it's kind of a difficult scenario, and he's kind of eased his way back into the lineup. Um, you know, Vitesse is right in the middle of the table there, Austin. Uh, yeah, they look like they might get a Europa League spot. Yeah, yeah, they're close. That they're, yeah. they're close to it. They're close mm-hmm. to a Europa League spot. Um, but, yeah, Miazga's been pretty pretty solid throughout. It looks like what was interesting is towards the end of the season that comes uh, here that he is getting close to i think he signed just a few years with chelsea and they're they're at a critical yeah. spot where most he's probably going to play a few, few preseason <laughs> games let's be well hopefully hopefully we'll see i don't think he'll be part of the preseason conclusion. tour maybe probably. that okay yeah i, uh, I, I, I could get might, behind might, that yeah. but yeah like he said like he's yeah. not going to start for chelsea I, no. so or uh, get game time or get yeah in meaningful <laughs> games honestly let's um, be honest. yeah it's a chelsea quality team yeah. but uh, anyway, it, it looks like, you know, he might go out on loan, but to a, a significantly better league. Um, there's been some rumors around there, uh, possibly a Bundesliga team, which would be exciting to see. Yeah. Especially for a young center back, I think it's a great place to develop. And one team he was linked with, um, I think it was two years ago, before he went on loan to Vitesse, or it might have been actually last summer, now that I'm thinking about it, was uh, Eintracht Frankfurt. Hmm. So that's a team to maybe keep an eye on. Uh, I know they had some interest with them before. Niko Kovac, their, that, yeah. uh, their, their coach, is, is moving to Bayern Munich next season. It sounds like a lot of their players are going to get picked up by some of the, the top clubs uh, in Germany. So they might need a center back to replace a center back that's, uh, that's going out or, or leaving. Yeah. I know, I think it's David Abrahams, one of their center backs, who's been playing very well all season. Wouldn't be shocked if, if he's picked up by a, a top team in the Bundesliga. He's a little older, more mature. So... That's something to keep an eye on. I know that's a team that would make sense, in my opinion, for him to go there. And I think he would be, yeah, that's, that's it'd be a great thing. opportunity for him to play in the Bundesliga, get to really test his talent among some of the, the best players in the world. Um, right. I think he's ready to take that step. At, yeah, you know, I, I think at so, least too. To, yeah, a little higher league or a higher team, I should say. Um, that he's, yeah, like we mentioned just before, he's been starting consistently. Uh, gets he has this thing in his contract where um, Chelsea doesn't like Vitesse couldn't buy him uh, from the okay. loan, so they would. I know yeah. I was reading somewhere I think it was a you know, Brian Scred article as well oh, okay. uh, that they most of these teams like an Eintracht Frankfurt mm-hmm. or a German team or even you know one of the top teams in Italy Spain uh, would want to have that you know inserted that clause inserted like a bio uh, like a bio clause exactly okay. uh, just because you know Miazga has put himself in a great situation in Chelsea. I'm sure has recognized that he's been performing well enough that they could sell him to a good team and uh, not yeah. just kind of one of those uh, players that fizzles out in Chelsea and kind of disappears and they you know, give him wherever. I think he's really made a name for himself uh, in Europe to yeah. take that next step. I think so, yeah. And we want to mention uh, this week he played, what, 90 minutes? That's right. In a That's 5-0 right. win over, who is uh, it again? 20, 20. <laughs> FC Twente. FC okay. Twente, yeah. So. Yeah, so that's a good performance, and, and that really helps Vitesse, who's currently, like we said before, fighting for a Europa League spot for next season. Definitely. So, um, yeah, so Pat, then, do we want to touch briefly on another player, another young player who's only 16 years old, yeah. who, who had a... a Big call up, I want to say. Maybe yeah. not, not a big call up, but a progression where he's at right now, and that would be Conrad De La Fuente. That's right. So, Austin. so Pat, what did uh, Conrad De La Fuente uh, do this week, or what happened? Yeah, with so him? Uh, he got his uh, debut for uh, Barca's Juvenil A, which there is go. exciting. From uh, yeah. took the jump from B to A. Yeah. So that, and yeah. he's only 16, so that's that's really impressive. It is very impressive, and there's another like the, American uh, Letterman mm-hmm. who's still. Uh, Still at B there. Moving at B, yeah. Um, and so, he's also, I believe, a year older yeah, than I think, De La Fuente. Yeah, I think he is older. So. Um, but yeah, he played, uh, I think, yeah, he got some game time. Played about uh, 20-something minutes, I think right? 22 Entered minutes. 22 minutes. Mm-hmm. Um, so, yeah, I mean, they were already up, I believe, four, they won the game 4-0. Yeah, 
Uh, yeah, they were up 4 0 when he came uh, yeah. in. Didn't really see the final score, so I'm guessing that they won at least 4 right. 0. But um, besides the fact, just crucial mm-hmm. point there that, like Austin said, to take that jump from B to A, especially with Barca's it's Academy, yeah. uh, La Masi, that's, that's great. It's a great opportunity for him. Uh, like we've been saying before, uh, during some quick kicks in a few episodes prior, he, uh, Conrad Delfuente, has been scoring and performing impressively uh, for uh, Juvenil B. Um, during some of the tournaments uh, that they've had in the past like month or two. So must have gotten some good recognition from the uh, Barca coaches and yeah. s- hopefully he cr- climbs that ladder and see where it goes. He's still young. Yeah, and it's important to also say that uh, Barca's Juvenil A team is essentially what like a Bundesliga's U19 right. team is. So Juvenil A is kind of the highest youth team that they have and all their best, brightest prospects play there. Um, and they usually are under like 18. I know a lot of their 19 year olds uh, play for Barcelona B in the second league over in Spain just because it's a better mm-hmm. competition for them um, right. and, and gives them more meaningful minutes. But all those players who are kind of 18 and under play in Juvenil A and, you know, a lot of really, really good prospects for the future that are going through the Barcelona Academy right now when they were 18 were playing in that team. So Conrad de la Fuente is only 16 playing in that team that's that's really exciting and it's it, it shows that he's a player that they actually value and think will Definitely, will make yeah. something of his career in the future where not to rag on him too much <laughs> but ben letterman's kind of stalled a little bit from what we've heard and uh juvenil b staying at juvenil b as a 17 year old's a lot less promising mm-hmm. than than what we were so, hoping from Ben Letterman. Right. But that's and not to say he can't make things happen. But, right. but definitely a with concerning. the upside of a, a 16, like you said, the Conrad's been making some great strides. And yeah. um, you know, hopefully, Austin, we, we hear more from him in the years I to hope. come. Yeah, because he's, he's going to be a big part of that uh, that U20 team coming that's right. up. Right? I'm or excited. Or yeah, maybe that, the U17 team, I yeah, guess, because he's 16. Right. Mm-hmm. Those next few cycles, I'm excited to see. Uh, yeah, it should be, should be interesting to see what he can do. All right, so Austin, uh, do you have the time on you? Oh, yeah, it's... Uh, yeah, what time is it? It's time for Quick Kicks. Let's see you could test Dwayne Miller. It's Altidore over the wall, and that one is in! Josie Altidore from a long way out! The opening goal for the United States! So, guys, to start it off this week, Christian Pulisic played 61 minutes in Borussia Dortmund's 1-1 draw with Werder Bremen. And Eric Palmer Brown started went the full 90 in a crucial win for KV Kortrick. A 2-1 over Lears keeps their Europa League spot alive. And Wes McKinney played 26 minutes for Schalke in their 1-1 draw with Gladbach. Schalke were down to 10 men for most of this match. And unfortunate news for Cameron Carter-Vickers, Austin. Wasn't even named in the 18 for Ipswich Town's victory. And Kevin Lankford played 90 minutes in Heidenheim's 2-0 win over Sandhausen this past weekend. And finally, Julian Green played 90 minutes in Greuther First's unfortunate 3-0 loss to FC St. Pauli. So, as always, guys, thanks for watching. Make sure you like this video and subscribe to our channel. And again, our Instagram and Twitter pages, if you're not following them, make sure to give those a follow and uh, you know, share those with your friends. And we'd always love to hear from you guys, so make sure you leave a comment. We'd love to interact with you. And I know we have some uh, friendlies coming up, especially in Bolivia and Philly, which is close to us. Right. Um, You know, in preparation for a few years down the road, because what will happen, Austin, one day? Well, one day, guys, we will win the elusive World Cup.